So we are back on the Dr. Dahlia Show. Thank you all for tuning in. one 877 doc one 877 docdali Please follow us on Twitter at Dr. Dahlia and on Facebook, the Dr. Dahlia Show. Now, Tropical Storm Chantel uh, appears to be pretty fast moving. And from what I understand, it's still kind of huddling near Barbados, and we are predicting that it may be coming up close towards the Florida coast and um you know it just kind of reminds us that we're in hurricane season hurricane season doesn't have to be august hurricane season can start as early as june go deep into november and you know with all the changes with the el nino and the water temperature etc there could be various variations in between now i'm always harping to you guys about hurricane preparedness and tornado preparedness and obamacare preparedness and any other things to prepare for and Many of us, we say, yeah, 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 we're prepared, but we don't. And, um, you know, I'm a huge fan of freeze dry guy because I love their food. I eat their food. And in my supply storage, I use freeze dry guys. So I figured I would introduce to you somebody who is extremely fascinating, who has actually covered hurricanes, tornadoes when he worked for ABC News. He's a television reporter, producer. Plus, he's also from freeze dry guys. So I'm going to answer some of our questions on what those goodies are. So I'd like to introduce Thomas Baldrick. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Good morning. How, how, does, how does a guy like me try to keep up with your energy level? That's what I'm asking myself <laughs> oh, as I listen to you. <laughs> no, no, okay, so, I mean, I, what, what, have, what was the worst hurricane you covered, and, and where were you? Oh, I'm trying to think. I don't know if it was Andrew. I know there was some really, um, some really heart-wrenching stories with Gordon. Uh, Florida is, is pretty much Florida and, and a few along the North Carolina coast. Uh, Cape Hatteras kind of seems to be ground zero for a lot of them, but it, it's amazing what a hurricane does. And, and it, it kind of happens in cycles. It's, there's a panic that happens when the storm is coming, and people are like, oh, geez, I should have done something, but I didn't. So they, they get in this frenzy, and they try to go to a supermarket, and there's right. only three days of food there on a good day. So things are cleaned out. And then the storm comes, and people wonder what's going to happen, and they're worried to death, and there's, there's uh, high winds, and there's heavy rains, and there's flooding, and they look at everything they have and everything they own being washed away in a matter of hours. Torna- the thing that's fascinating to me is how tornadoes Tornadoes frequently pop up during hurricanes. So you'll see a hurricane uh, a, a track, a damage of where the storm was, and then inside are pockets in those communities where tornadoes popped up and just leveled everything. And then, Doctor, the aftermath is is the last phase, and that's when mm-hmm. people look at the devastation. That's when the stress of, oh, my God, what did I lose financially occurs, and your immune system is down. You know when you're stressed out, and you find a lot of people get sick after hurricanes. There's not food to eat. There's not clean water to drink. And um, these are things that, as you just said, people can fit now. Right, right. Uh, you know, and I'm seeing various uh, uh, degrees of suggestions on how much you should have in your storage locker or your um, uh, preparatory room. You know, when, when it comes to hurricanes or tornadoes or fires, I mean, you know, it's hard to predict if you need five days, 15 days. What, what, what in your experience has been the norm of how, how much food supply or storage supplies for how long should be kept? Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. People like to, people like to, uh, a lot of people like to beat up on FEMA, but I don't know how many people would want to take on that job. Going, going into a community that's just been devastated by a, a natural disaster like a hurricane or something else. Um, but you'll find that it's usually a period of days, maybe, maybe five days, maybe seven, something like that, where things start to show signs of normalcy again. The first few days are, are panic stricken. Shock. And yeah. what you'll find, what, you, yeah, that shock. And what you'll find often is that they get there, they get established, but then there's a time delay between where they can find you and get to you or where you can find them and get to them. If you don't have a radio and, and your car's been destroyed, how are you going to get across town? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 
and and food is just one of those things people people stock up on weapons to protect themselves but i don't know very many that can eat ammunition um mm-hmm. you've you've got to do what you can first thing is just staying alive and that's right. not being over dramatic but the first thing is staying alive and food is comfort for many of us and mm-hmm. if you don't have to be stressed out about uh, how, but, am but my, gonna, my how am i going to is... feed when i when, <laughs> yeah, when i've my... got no power what am no, I going right. to do if you yeah. had delicious food that could give you that comfort and all you have to do is add water? Well, that, that's the solution right there. Uh, so, yeah, and, and before we get to the food, though, uh, I do have to say, when I threw this out there two years ago, uh, when I asked everybody what is in your storage locker, what is in your in your, in your your silo, the number one answer was a weapon. And, and that does make sense to me because things go crazy. When you, when you brought up, you know, the fear, when you brought up the shock, the chaos, uh, I am for having a weapon, I, I you know, hands Absolutely. down. Absolutely. But then the next thing would be the water, and the next thing would be the food. And then, of course, the medical supplies a way to listen to the Dr. Dahlia show, you know, X, M, I, Z. But now, okay, so, so tell me about, because I talk about <laughs> freeze-dried guy all the time on the show, but I, I don't, I don't r- really, you know, tell them how easy it is and why this is something that's such a necessity during emergencies. I'll, I'll let you take over there. Take over there. Well, for example, we've got, we've got a thing just called a bug-out bucket. And and that is something when you've got a bug out, you grab it and you go. And it's in a plastic container with a handle. You could be out the door in a second. And there is there's like 32 servings in those. And that's pouches where literally, you know, if you, if you don't have you know your fine china or or, um, or even plates or anything, you can literally just pour the water into the pouch, wait a couple of minutes, and then eat it. Mm-hmm. And there's, mm-hmm. you know, staple staple meals like spaghetti with beef, chicken and rice, you know, macaroni, chicken alfredo, even, you know, bacon and eggs are a breakfast skill at the start mm-hmm. of your day in the morning. Mm-hmm. And these are all yeah. high-protein foods, which will give you energy when you're really going to need it because the stress of the aftermath of the hurricane or during the hurricane is going to deplete anybody of energy. Now, I bought and some of mine, um, Tom, Thomas, I bought some of mine a couple of years ago. How long do these packages hold for? That's just where I was following you. The shelf life of these is generally, for legal purposes, they say 25-plus years. But we regularly do taste tests with people, live taste tests, where uh, Ronnie, our, our COO, will will – more or less, not blind people, but with them being able to see, he will give them um, new food that was that was newly just uh, created, and compare that with food that's over 30 years old. And you would be shocked, or maybe not, at how many people say they enjoy the taste of the 30 plus year food just as much as the new. No, I believe so it. For those of you jo- hold on, hold on. Uh, for those of you joining us, this is Thomas Baldrick from Freeze Dry Guy, uh, talking to us about food preparedness um, uh, during hurricane, tornado seasons, fires, etc. It looks like we're going to be coming up on the end of the show. Where do people get Freeze Dry Guy? The easiest place, and and is there any discounts they could get through us? Because you know, I I want to be able to make sure people can do this and as inexpensively as possible. Well, you're a rock star. So if they go to freeze. <laughs> DryGuy.com and get whatever they want. If they enter Dahlia, the code Dahlia, D A L I A H, they will get 10% off right there. That's a beautiful and, code. Um, That's beautiful, yeah. <laughs> it is. And, and, you, and know, free you, you, you talked yeah. about. You talked about the season. Sandy ruined Halloween last year. You're right. And You're all right. the experts are afraid that people have hurricane amnesia. And they're expecting up to 20 named storms. We had the first one a month earlier. Today is the average day that the first named storm hits. July and we've 11th. already yep. had a few, yep. and they started a month ago. Well, Thomas, thank you. And, and big thanks to Freeze Dry Guy uh, for preparing as many people as they have. Guys, check that out. Go to FreezeDryGuy.com. Use coupon code Dahlia. Don't go away. We'll be back for another hour. 